<laughs> meeting? Well, if I was, Glenn was helping. Okay. <laughs> no, we're not meeting. <laughs> No, actually, what I'm working on is one of the, uh, a piece of the centerpieces for the Congress. And um, they're bookmarks, and I have a thousand of them to put the little tassels on. And I can tell you at the last meeting, thank you to Carol, who volunteered during the last meeting to sit next to me and tassel up the bookmarks. Anyway, um, I just had a couple things to mention. One of those is the reminder of the Congress for uh, Saturday. It is not too late to attend, uh, so please, if you need, if you want to register, um, I know you have the information. The website is NC uh, NC Congress LA. Um, we have tons of different classes. I think there's 25 different to pick from. It does include breakfast and lunch. Please sign up online, though, if you are going to attend, so we can make sure we have the food numbers right. Um, one of the things that I brought tonight, and and I'm not, we're not going to take action on, but I wanted you to all have it is the copy of the new um, code of conduct policy. So I'm, I want, I want to, I don't even know where to begin. Okay, on the code of conduct policy, when we first started, and you know what initiated is the original issue where uh, Councilwoman Mark Murray Martinez wanted to go ahead and create a, um, the, have the city council decide how neighborhood councils should act and what penalties and things would happen for behavior. Um, we were given the opportunity to, to do that ourselves um, as a commission if we chose to. And we chose to because we felt that we would actually hear from the neighborhood councils and get a better idea of what, what you guys would want to see. So um, initially what was being uh, presented was a training for everybody. That was supposed to be the first step. Everybody had to do training. And many people didn't feel that they had issues on the neighbor councils that they didn't feel like they had to do training. Um, what we did is we started the, working on this policy and what I have a copy of tonight is the uh, first step in the policy and what that decision was that we made was that instead of everybody having to do mandatory training that everybody needed to read and sign of code of conduct. Uh, so that if you read and sign the code of conduct and you don't have any other issues and there's no complaints or anything like that, then basically you're done. You don't have to worry about any further actions or any further trainings or anything. If there are continued problems, though, then there are going to be um, penalty phases, things like um, ultimately potential removal from the board. So. We are only doing this as a step process. This is what the city attorneys had advised us. The most important thing to us was to get the code of conduct out so that everybody understood and knew what their behavior, what the expectations of their behavior was. So I do have a copy of that to hand out tonight. So um, you can review it. I would like to um, ask you to put it on an agenda coming up and I'll come back and talk on it so that we can um, go over it and have everybody sign it. Um, it is going into effect, not for a couple months, but it'd be great if you guys were one of the examples who stepped up, signed it, and was ready to go, um, instead of like with ethics and funding where we're dragging people to the table kicking and screaming. One of the things to let you know about this conduct policy is, for anybody who do, does not want to sign the code of conduct policy, um, you're given a certain amount of time, which is 60 days, if you don't sign it within the 60 days, then or the 30 days, then um, you can be suspended. 60 days, you can be removed from the board. 60 to 90 days. And the reason why is because, as board members of the neighborhood council system, we are spending taxpayer money, and the taxpayers have a right to be treated in a certain manner. And while many people are fighting back with us saying, well, the city council doesn't behave according to, the reality is this is not about the city council, this is about us. And we're spending taxpayer money, and this is one of the things that, that we, that if we don't do this our way and make it so that it's not so punitive for everybody, it's going to come down like the golden hammer and, and the city council will do it for us. So we want to make sure that we continue to get your input as we go on to the next levels of this policy um, because your input is very important to us. We do discuss it at the bond commission meetings and um, I know, I, and I have a question because this relates, how many of you received the newsletter that I send out to the board? If you're not receiving the newsletters that I send to you on occasion, then you need to make sure that your neighbor council board roster is updated because I want to make sure that you all get it. 
Um, I just do different things like, hey, remind me about the posting policy or things like that. But this is something that I am likely to mention again, and I want to make sure that you understand when those opportunities to speak on this come up. And that's where you're going to find out is through that newsletter. So I will go ahead and pass this out. Does anybody have any questions? Sure, I have some extras. Sure. Anything else? Me neither. appreciate that input and I'm sure that the board does too. Um, I, I do have to say that the, the, the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners covers the entire city of Los Angeles. We have 95 neighborhood councils. So while one board may not be having a problem at all, others are and there are a lot of problems. So we can't just pick and choose neighborhood councils to, to make policies for. So we have to do it across the board. No, I'm just saying. To keep it fair to everybody and all the councils, because there are some issues on. So, you know, we volunteered, we've been voted in, so we agree to listen to the rules. But well, we do certainly appreciate your comments. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Carol. I have a question about the Congress. I had sure. a stakeholder approach me because I have, like you, mm -hmm. been letting people know that stakeholders may attend the Congress as well. Mm -hmm. And that's encouraged. And uh, this particular person is with a group, and they they wanted to maybe get in on the action session. But it sounded to me last night at the Northridge East meeting that the action session was really more about getting reports from the neighborhood councils, not community groups who wanted to stand up and make a statement. Yes, that is correct. Um, there actually has been changes to the action session um, where there was going to be voting and opinions at the end. That has been changed due to a, a, an issue with getting the equipment that we needed. Um, but there will be, what's going to happen now is that each of the alliances, it was already set up as the first part, we just decided if it ends earlier to go ahead and let people go earlier. And that is the alliances will be doing presentations. And I believe it's something to the effect of what would they like to see in the future of neighbor councils, what ideas do they have to make the system better, that kind of thing from all over the city. So it's going to be great for presentations, but it's not the opportunity for other people to, to bring up their issues. Can I just ask if at some point in the possibly near future we can create a public forum for something like that, create an opportunity? <laughs> My sidekick over here. <laughs> the one who keeps me in line. Um, if they want to attend the event, there is table. There will be a place that they can put some literature if they wanted to. But it does. But the literature cannot be something like where they're asking for money. That's that's one of the things that's against. If they want to explain what they do, if we would have had more opportunity, they could have had a table. But at this point, we're out of time because we're right here. So keep in mind for next year. And yes, there are some opportunities and. You guys can put together whatever you'd like. I actually have some outreach ideas for that kind of stuff. So if you want to get together with me, I'm happy to help you plan something. Gary. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, I may have missed it, but how often do you put out your newsletter? I don't do it on a steady basis. I only do it usually as a reminder for upcoming events like, hey, the bond commissioners are going to be meeting in the North Valley or... Um, or don't, you know, if I hear there's problems, I'm at councils, I hear there's problems, I'll send it out as a reminder. I don't have a set time that I do it. You may get one a week and you may not get one for a month. It just really depends on, it depends on me and time and it depends on what information needs to be shared. And if I get to, if I'm at your meetings all the time, I try to give you updates here. Um, so I get to most of my meetings. So I, if I wasn't getting to the meetings, you'd be hearing from me by email. So I'd much rather be here in person. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Okay, let's move on.
Okay, so we're going to go into our officer's reports, and I've got a few things to uh, come up with some updates real quick for a few people in reference to some of our funding issues. So the first one I'd like to get an update on is our funds uh, to the Mid Valley Library for the movie refreshments uh, deal. David, can you tell me where we're at with that? I've seen the movie statements as I've been going through with the tables. So. Okay, yeah, they just had the first movie, okay. and Vicki, uh, I believe, spent about 30 some odd dollars on, on that particular, on the refreshments for that one. That was this past Saturday. How are they running the uh, money and accounting for that? Um, we're going to reimburse her for the... Okay, so she'll give us the bills. Yeah. And you're you're the, handling that personally then? Right? I believe so. Okay, cool. That's yeah. all I need. Um, also, you. she made plugs and she made photocopies of the um, the tri brochure that distributed and she did announce that it was sponsored okay, cool. by the neighborhood council. Thank you. Okay, uh, there was a discussion and an approval of the 821-14 minutes. 820, that's August. Okay, that doesn't need to come back up on this section. That'll come back up into the secretaries. Uh, the treasury report will be fine. I have an update here looking for the receiving billing information for additional neighborhood watch signs up to $1,000. They were approved on July 17th, and I haven't gotten a number of signs yet uh, from the last Georgia General Board meeting. So, Dave, do you have something on that, on the amount of signs we're going to be going for that dollar amount? It's variable. Uh, it depends on there's two sizes of signs. The bigger sign, of course, costs more. Okay. The installation costs are identical. That does not matter on a first sign basis. On uh, this next round, we'll call it Roman numeral two, if you will. We're still just finishing Roman numeral one. It is possible to put a neighborhood watch sign where there's no existing support. In other words, a metal pole can be driven into the ground, typically on somebody's personal property and he signed place there. The cost of those poles is very cheap. I presume that's going to slightly increase the install cost compared to a pre-existing pole. So exact number of signs, how many poles, I don't have an exact number on that. Uh, we can come up with a ballpark and frankly, I think the smaller signs actually work just as good as the bigger ones uh, with the exception of beginnings of streets where the impact of a bigger sign uh, is perhaps desirable. So we can get more bang for our buck using the smaller of the two sizes. Okay, so for the thousand dollars, are we looking at twenty dollars a sign roughly, or a hundred dollars a sign? Just rough ballpark. So uh, that's come up in a couple of emails in reference to who's getting them and it's where. It's about and how many. seventy-five to eighty dollars a sign thereabouts. Uh, we do that. We'll round it up at hundred for now, and that just gets yeah, pretty easy. Okay, that's cool. thank you. Uh, the next one that would be the information. Well, Dave's taking care of that one. Uh, letter. Nancy will come up with that when she's done there. So let's move over to the next one. Is for the approval of the Veronica Street Fair. That is pending, so there's no problems there. That will go with our 821 minutes, so that's pretty easy. We'll move on with that one. Uh, update on our trifolds. Nancy will handle that when she's done there also. And the next thing was an update on the North Hills West uh, blood drive, so I'm going to let Deborah talk on that while Nancy's handing out the forms. My report. No problem. No, these are just updates. Okay, so uh, on number nine, which is really not part of this, but just quick updates on my notes here. Uh, Deborah's going to give us an update on our what was to be our blood drive coming up in the fall. The update on the blood drive is um, they I contacted American Red Cross and they're unable to accommodate the dates that we wish. They don't do blood drives on Saturdays and the only days that they are available are Monday through Friday and Sunday. And we have to have a facility that is at least 2,200 square foot. We wanted to have it here. Uh, New Horizons, but uh, they, again, we can't have it during the week. Uh, we can have it on a Sunday, but we have to have it from 7 a.m. to about 6 p.m. because 7 a.m. they set up and whatnot. 
that whole thing. So the dates that they had available were mainly Monday through Friday, and of course New Horizons is unavailable that way. The only other facilities that would accommodate that type of size that they needed it to be would be a church, and of course most of our churches here in the valley are unavailable on Sundays or temples or sanctuaries of that nature. They're not available on Sundays, so we're going to have to kind of scrap that unless I contacted a number of hospitals and I'm yet to hear, especially we don't have very many in North Hills. I don't think we have one. But anyway, um, so that I may have to, um, I've decided just to like scrap it because if they can accommodate us on a Saturday, which would be most convenient, I thought, for a lot of people. And then if they did come out on a Saturday, they want me to guarantee a number of people would sign up um, via their email to say that they were going to uh, volunteer to give blood. But I didn't even get a request for anyone to volunteer to assist me when I mentioned this the last two meetings. So um, we'll just have to scrap that and maybe at a later date and I can get some more volunteers. Maybe we can do it. Uh, Red Cross again, they pick up the tab. They would have paid for the facility here for us to have it here. They would have paid for the refreshments. All we had to do as an NC is possibly uh, supply a few more refreshments. They even have cookies and drinks, of course, because I think if anyone has given blood, you know they give you cookies and orange juice and whatnot. So what I thought we would do is possibly give the workers, you know, something to eat <laughs> um, if they were going to be here an all-day thing. So for the moment, that um, my bright idea is no longer bright. Okay. So, John, then. John. Oh, go ahead, Gary. Uh, I would just like to ask, why are we discussing a non-agendized item for which the Dole board has had no input, nor discussion, nor vote? These are all. There's nothing to vote on. These are all motions that I'm trying to get an update for uh, board members and stakeholders on monies that we've spent. These are part of my report and my notes. There has never been a motion on that. Look at it. It's information. Okay, so that is mine. Dan, Vice President? Okay. My next one will go over to Carol. Thank you. Um, I don't have a written report tonight. I did have one that I put out for the month of August, and if I can just uh, hand that to David Levine or myself to record for the record, we'll just enter that into the record. Um, as you know, I am a member of the Recycled Water Advisory Group, and I am um, the DWP MOU for our neighborhood council. And so I do tend to attend all of the DWP MOU meetings, as well as the ratepayer advocacy meetings for DWP. I also attend all of the um, Recycled Water Advisory Group meetings, so I was very happy to hear the candidate tonight talk about the importance of water, because obviously we can't live in a desert without water. And I don't see it getting a lot wetter anytime soon. So, um, On another matter, I have been devoting a great deal of time to the Nation Builder software platform. This is because our mayor has um, invested a great deal of uh, time, effort, and some money in this system, and he has what's called a nation, and that's, um, that is the larger group. And then we are currently lucky enough to be one of only 12 neighborhood councils that were invited to participate in the pilot program for Nation Builder, and that will help us to not only to have a better handle on our data management, we can build a brand new database using Nation Builder. It will be cloud-based. It will belong to the people of North Hills West, not to any one individual. So it will be accessible and it will continue in perpetuity as long as we uh, maintain it. So I, I personally am very excited about it and, as I said, devote time to it actually every day. I'm learning a brand new system and it's a new skill set, folks. So it's, uh, you know, it's a little like speaking Greek. I'm learning how to speak Greek. So as I get more information, I'll be sharing it with others. I have already shared a little bit of it with Deborah, our treasurer, the, the financial segment of it. 
They have website, people, and communications. And I think it's really going to help us positively impact our outreach efforts in the future. I think that's about it. Thank you. Oh, if I might add, uh, we do have a representative from Nation Builder that will be coming next month, and he can give a, a full-on presentation. I have a slideshow for anyone who's interested. I'm not going to burden this assembly with it tonight, but those who are interested in Nation Builder, I would be very happy to share the information with you. And we may even call, uh, if I may, a tech support meeting, and anyone interested in that sort of thing, I would urge you to come on out to the tech support committee meeting. Thank you. We've got something written into here, so Carol, you want to bring up your motion to approve the August 21st uh, general board meeting minutes, please? Let's take it off of C1 and reverse it over to yours, please. It's right on your agenda. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Sorry, you have me at a disadvantage. I was actually at the tech training for Nation Builder that night, so I wasn't even here. But I'll bring it up. Motion to approve the August 21st, 2014 general board meeting minutes. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, there's a comment from David. Of course. Go ahead, David. Can you hear my scratchy voice? Thank you. Go for it. Just uh, wanted to address briefly, at least a one person mentioned that in the minutes that it looks like the minutes writer, in this case me, wrote uh, a lot of things about one of the items uh, and actually when the minutes are written, all of the agenda text, that is the text that was already in the gen agenda before the meeting, was simply copied into the minutes. Specifically in this August 21st minutes, item number five, all of that text, starting with 5A, is directly copied from the agenda which I did not create, someone else did. That is not writing by me about anything that happened at the meeting. Correct. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions on the board to my right here? On the minute, you're okay with them? Anybody to the left? Gary? I'm not sure if anyone else had a chance to collate the facts with nine pages of minutes, but they were literally at the 11th hour presented, so I'm not sure if anyone else really had a chance to go over these properly. I just asked, does anybody on the right? I got no. Does anybody on the left have any questions? If you don't mind, since I wasn't here, I'm, I have no questions, but I will abstain. No problem. Sure. That's okay. Anybody in the audience have any questions about it? Okay. Let's just call for a vote then. Thank you. John McDover? Yes. Dan Gibson? Yes. Carol Hart? She's abstaining. Deb Rush? Yes. Dave Brown? Yes. Nancy Zander? Yes. David Hyman? Yes. Gary Fordyce? Yes. Carlos Maya? Yes. Armando? Abstained all of Mike Lee? Yes. Puna? Yes. The motion passes. Ten yeses, two abstentions, no absences. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Carol. Move over to now our treasurer's report, which will reflect number two on this uh, agenda sheet. And that will be motion to approve the August 2014 monthly expense report. All right. Um, call, call your motion again. All right. Approve uh, the August 2014 monthly expenditure report. I'll second that. Floor is yours. Any comments? Um, if you're being heard this, yes. Here's here was the deal. 
Uh, we were supposed to get initial funding of our $37,000 on July 1. Well, we were one of the 15 MCs that did not receive our checking account information. So we didn't get our funds until actually deposited until August 21st. That's when we got our information on our checking account and our, uh, uh, it's not a debit card, it's a quote, not even a P card this time, it's a, a credit card. So we didn't get our information until August 21st. So the number one item on the monthly expenditure report was the refund for, um, I paid the initial funds for our, our NC election that was at the Onion. We didn't have funds, so I paid for that. Uh, the second is, uh, number two is partners in diversity. Um, I think Janet did our, uh, our uh, special meeting we had at the firehouse and David, De David Levine did the following um, general board meeting minutes. We owed um, New Horizons because again, we didn't have funds because with our elections, with the budget, that whole thing, we did not have funds. So we owed them exactly four months. They're number 13 and number four, five, and six are all for um, New Horizons and it was our monthly bill. Um, Number seven was a payment for Roy. I believe it was, um, you know, us. Mm -hmm. We're good. I know, but I have to still go through all of them anyway. I was going to go through them all. <laughs> um, Roy, number seven. Uh, apparently, uh, before we were actually all on the board, there was an agreement of some sort that we, he would do six months free and six months with a minimum of $200 to assist uh, maintaining our uh, website or web page. And so um, we, since we didn't have enough money at the end of our last budget, then we already had approved that to be paid. So we finally paid him. Number eight, um, Nancy bought some donuts at the special board meeting at the fire station and also she paid for copies at Staples for the bylaws that um, uh, we needed for that day. Um, Dave Brown purchased some memory cards and we needed to reimburse him for those items as well. Um, number 11, um, Dave Brown also purchased water for the um, National Night Out uh, events that were held at Mission Hills and um, uh, Devonshire Police Department. So, and those were the funds. That, that's one of the two invoices. The other one's in the works, is it? Um, well, is it? You tell me. <laughs> because I went to Smart and Final and they gave me one invoice. So until someone can come up with another one, then I'll gladly pay it. But they have one, um, even they even just so happened the day I think you gave me a business card of someone because it was some the, type uh, of problem. Yeah, they couldn't generate a second invoice for a second identical purchase, so he gave me his business card instead. Okay, so I went to Smart and Final on Whitley and Devonshire. And uh, with that business card, the day uh, I went up there, that individual wasn't there, but just so happened another manager was, and their district manager was, and so I told them you encountered a problem with the duplication of they, that they said, you know, this and that. Anyway, they went back on the film because apparently they film all of this stuff, and they, I was a little astounded, <laughs> to say the least, so anyway, um, they pulled up and they said it was only one purchase made. They asked me to sit down and watch film that was had, and that was the end of that. So if no, you that's gave, interesting because I paid cash on purpose so I could get a cash receipt. No, I understand that. So, and I, they gave me what they had because I, they gave me what they had. I got one receipt. And okay, well, for now, the one exactly. receipt is going to cover the August, and then we'll go over right. that. Right, then if we can come up with something we'll else, then that that definitely. Week, so it can go up until a prior or a future meeting. Right, and then the number 12 item was, um, a throne rental was for the portable restaurant for the community barbecue, so we got to pay one item for the month of August, because we got a little bit of money in our account. Um, anyway, so we did uh, pay them, and uh, that was for the rental of the portable restrooms, and that was their bill, and like I said, number 13 was the final bill for um, New Horizons. So that makes us current. 
That brings us current today. And um, so therefore, we uh, I'm asking for approval of the amount of expenditures for the month of August were $3,495.08. Uh, our previous um, month, uh, I may want to explain how Dunn is doing our checking account. Here's the deal. We are allowed $4,000 a month. If we do not spend that $4,000 a month, then whatever is remaining, they will add the next month up to $4,000. And we cannot go below, in one, any month's time, below $1,000. We have to maintain, maintain a minimum of $1,000 each month. We won't go below. Well, we happen to go below because we were unaware of that. They didn't tell us that. But they are encouraging us not to go below, to maintain exactly $1,000 in there. Question, may we request special funds? Yes. 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 As we just did As for the barbecue, did. we asked for, uh, you know, that $5,000 was a lot, we asked for that. Uh, it took a few days to get that running. They give you on a certain day. It takes roughly three to five business days for Union Bank and the city to have it into our account so that we see it. And that is now, I just saw it this morning, um, September, they give it like September 8th and September 9th. They posted those, uh, you know, standard months and then that extra one. So yes, you can have over uh, 4000 in the account at one time if you ask for that money. If you're going to have extra expenses, that's why we have that 90 day. You need to make sure that, or we need to make sure that we get up ahead of cap. They just don't want to have to give uh, money out of their treasury into our place. Originally, a lot of people were told that they were going to give us $4,000 every month on the first of the month up till the total of $37,000 around month nine or whatever, you wouldn't be getting any more money. That's not correct. So for some web, uh, for one, for some neighborhood councils that gave 20,000 or more back last year, they're not gonna be seeing anything. They'll never be able to do that. If they don't spend it, they don't get it. Right. Go ahead, Gary. Yes, uh, three points. Uh, number one, I don't think it's helpful that we get numbers handed to us virtually during a meeting. We should have these numbers available to us before the meeting uh, in advance so we can go over them properly. Uh, secondly... Can't do that. Got to bring it up at the meeting and you guys can look at it at the meeting. If it takes an extra five minutes, so be it. But that's what they want to be open and transparent. You want to discuss it? Discuss it here. I said to go over the numbers just as we get an agenda in advance. Well, that's not what we're doing here. Obviously. We've been asked by Dunn and the city attorney not to discuss this prior because certain people have brought these up in emails. And that's where you get into your little violations and we're not going to do that. I wasn't suggesting discuss them. Well, that's okay. So you have your numbers. So what is your question on it? Uh, item 7, Roy Alsi. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a copy of that agreement that he was to do it free for six months and to be paid after that? It was part of the old board and we had his uh, bill for the six months and it was a verbal that he would do it for free uh, prior to the old board and then for the first six months uh, prior to his charging. Is it, I'm not sure that it's acceptable in the funding department to work on... We already asked the funding department on that. We had that question in reference to his wife joining the board as well. That's where that came out of. Okay. That um, was Jay Cornell at the time. Actually, you voted on that at that time also. I believe I voted against that for that reason. No problem. Next question. Uh, item 12. Mm -hmm. um, this appears to be the only item for the barbecue. Uh, we voted to allocate up to 5,000 with a promise that it was, a virtual promise that it would be kept under 3,000. Uh, we still don't know what the cost is. We know the cost, and where do you get 3,000 with 5,000? It's on the record, it's on the tape. 5,000. It would be, they would try to keep it under $3,000. Well, but you better find your tape, because I don't know where you get that amount. That's not correct. Your committee member sitting right next to you there. I believe others have heard that as well. 
Uh, Never heard that. That's first. But go ahead, next one. The point being is that it was a month later that a projected budget was distributed on August 21st and August 28th. And these expenditures have never been agendized, discussed, nor voted on by the board. What you did do is approve an allocation. The expenditures were never approved. And this item 12 has never been approved as an expenditure. It is only part of an allocation. And uh, it's not proper. I've spoken directly with Betty Wong. This is unacceptable to the funding department. I think you misheard uh, what she said because she was actually involved in you were the not rental there program. Last Wednesday. I was. I talked to her directly. Well, good. Then why don't you ask her to come in and address this board then? That would be the best way. Because I know you're 100% wrong on that one. She actually went through this with us with um, with all the insurance docs and the whole thing for that barbecue. You were not involved with that. So since you didn't help us with that barbecue, you weren't involved with some of our meetings. So we were very well involved with Betty Wong every step of the way, including Mario, who is her counterpart in getting us money. And that's exactly how we got our money funded on the 3rd of September and was in our account on the 8th of September. Gary, Nancy, Deborah, and myself and Carol were all involved with Betty constantly and Gracie Lou on an ongoing daily basis. And she was absolutely shocked and dismayed with the fact that she had been misled, that she assumed that they had all been approved expenditures and they were indeed not. She well, I think she may have misunderstood. So why don't you ask, no, why don't you do me a favor then? Call her up and ask her to show up at our next meeting then, or call for a special meeting because that would be the best thing then, because I'd love to get her in front of us and uh, ask her those questions. We just had the meeting with her on Wednesday and did, another one on Thursday. Did you not take the same funding training that I took? I had new funding training on Thursday, which I don't think you got because they changed all the forms from the meeting you went to on Wednesday. Anything else, though? Okay, let's move on then. Go ahead, Mary. Sure. Yeah, I'm looking at the July uh, MER and the August MER. There are a lot of duplications of expenses. The $1,200 appeared in your July MER and several other, and they also appear in the August. And then you have a new form. Is this a new spreadsheet from Dunn or is this your own? Or okay, I'll answer the first question. Number one, um, I think I stated at the beginning that in July we did not have funds. We did not, we were not able to pay bills. And per Dunn and our auditor, Merlo, all of those expenses were paid in the month of August. The only items that were paid in the month of July were three past due items for Partners of Diversity. Okay, that's fine. Your July MER, which the board approved, says that the expenses were $2,301. It would be my impression that a revised MER. Well, a revised MER. MER was done, and the auditor did it. It was approved from Betty, Gracie, and Merlo. So they've already approved that. I will print it, a new one out. Um, I will make sure that Armando has it and he can put it up on the website. So now revised MERs are being approved by Doug rather than the I board? Didn't, I, that's not what I said. I didn't say, I, what I no, said was did we, say. Were, we did were say. unable, we did not have funds, so therefore we were unable to pay bills. I understand. And, and not I finish? Don't, finish. Don't, don't interrupt. Just so, let's listen to this thing out here. What happened was, July, when I presented my MERS report, I anticipated done to pay all of those bills that were on our July MERS report, which was re was uh, approved by us. They did not. Uh, they did not pay our bills, and the only bills that they got were automatically submitted to them for partners in diversity. Since we didn't have access to our checking account until August 21st, they paid only three items. So therefore, I was required to put on the items and pay all of these people directly. Um, my point remains the same. You have an MER report that your board approved. They voted on the July monthly expense report. That's what they approved. It would seem to me that a revised one should come to the board for reapproval. That's all. That's all. Thank I'm you saying. for your comment. Go 
ahead, Gary. Just an observation. We have spent virtually the vast majority of every monthly MER, starting at the first of the year, justifying that no MER will track from month to month based upon, quote unquote, another audit. I mean, when does this stop and when do we have MERs that actually flow from month to month so that we know what the heck we're doing? Um, first of all, our new budget started July 1, and you, I believe that this board approved um, the budget that was submitted to Dunn, um, the mid part of July. I believe I was not at Correct. that meeting, uh, July 25th or something. July 17th. Thank you. That meeting, the you guys reallocated funds, and the budget was approved by this board, and the funds were allocated as such. Um, this long spreadsheet that Mary was inquiring about, I thought that it would be a little bit simpler form made, so I devised this one to show you guys to date what had been paid for our monthly expenditures in July, which totaled $476.20. That came out of our budget of 2014-2015, beginning July 1, and that budget goes until June 30th, 2015. The reason we did this form, and you heard a couple of people today say they don't have computers. We did this so that's a little bit easier than the Excel spreadsheet that the city gives you with multiple categories jumping back and forth. This will be an ongoing thing in our meetings here for everybody, and it will show July. Uh, this month it shows July, August, and uh, next month it will show everything with July, August, and September. It will give you a running balance for each budget uh, category. It will also give you a running balance uh, from our $37,000 yearly total. I don't see it getting any easier than this. We're just running this. this. is not a city forum. This is for people in the audience that come here to keep it simple. There are some, page two of the standard MER is a little bit jumping back confusing. And again, as of Thursday, they took the form that we used last month and they have changed it again. So, so be it. We'll work with that form and we'll get that out. We'll approve those forms. This is to try to make heads or tails of what's going on. This is only a $37,000 budget and most people will use more than that in their homes and nobody's off a penny. There's no reason to be off a penny in any of this here. And if there's any way somebody wants to see something simpler on this, please let me know. This is what I worked on this week with Deborah to make it as open and transparent and ongoing as possible. You will have this ongoing from July right on through the whole year. You'll have July, August, September of every penny that we spend. That's the easiest way we can make it for you. So you can all go back on this form and see everything spent. We'll call for the vote. Okay. John McGovern. Yes. Dan Gibson? Yes. Carol Hart? Yes. Deborah Perkins? Yes. Dave Brown? Yes. Nancy Zander? Yes. David Hyman? Yes. Gary Fordyce? No. Carlos no. Maya? Yes. Armando Diaz? Yes. Mike Khalid? Yes. Poonam Goyle? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. 11 yeses, 1 no. Okay, uh, earlier when Nancy was out, uh, I was not able to jump into the bank, re uh, bank re uh, report, but uh, Nancy, do you have anything to John, say? John, while you're still on treasure. Well, you have a question about the treasure? Yes. As was just happened, each of our votes are recorded. I believe that we don't know what is being sent to the city uh, funding department. I believe that those voting records should be attached to our minutes each and every month so they that they are. may approve them just as we approve our minutes. They are. And they're where, on your website. I, where are they? I've got the minutes. Well, I have one in front of me. They're on the table in the back. All the minutes have who voted what with the name. That, that is not what I'm talking about. I mean a Xerox copy of the actual voting form that is filled out. The vote count sheet. 
Yes. Yes. That is not attached to the minutes. And it, actually, the minutes reflect the vote count sheet. David, can you reiterate on that? That is correct. Yes, the okay, same. So that, and, and at that, because your throat's hurting there, I understand. But, and then that vote count sheet goes to Betty Wong, and then a copy of it is to go to our website, which Armando will handle as that form can be allowed out there. Once it's approved, it can be put out there and put onto the website. That would go, and I just looked at the website again today, so we have a section for meeting and agendas. What would, what would that go to Armando? Meeting and agendas, the minutes are there, and then also, For the minutes and then the sheets. For funding, you'll be funding on the Funding. Okay. John, the last month, we had many corrections to the voting record, and if indeed, that's what our minute taker derived the results from. Those records are not correct. He may amend the minutes, but we don't know if the voting record is being amended. We have a right to see those records. Well, come on over and you can see the records. I don't think that's the proper procedure. Come on over here. We can show you the records. The records are here at the meetings, and the records are on your website. If you need instructions on how to get to that website, please let me know. Armando, can you handle that for him? Thank you. You all have a right to see it, and obviously everybody here has seen them, or that wants to see them, I should say. David Levine. Thank you. Uh, there were not many corrections to the minutes uh, as far as uh, vote counts. I believe there was one, maybe two, as to uh, a particular vote, a board member voting a certain way. It was maybe one. Was that on a uh, financial matter, or was that on a standard board uh, business matter? I, I don't recall at this moment which okay. item it was on. Okay, thank you. And on all of those voting matters, we're using the same sheet now, just to keep it simple. Okay, any other questions on the Treasury right now? Oh, go ahead, Mary. Uh, there's another thing I know that's in your office, it's on the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Let's move on, please. Oh, you are coming. Go ahead, Gary. Gary, just so you know, all um, vote count sheets and the copy of the, uh, the approved minutes go with the expenditure report. Therefore, Dunn does verify that my vote count sheet matches what our minutes do. So when there was a correction, but like you said, uh, uh, David, I believe there was a correction. There was various corrections and those were made. So all uh, these are double checked uh, with our auditors. You also mentioned something about our auditor. Um, every NC is audited every single month. We all have a designated auditor in uh, uh, Dunn and they audit everything, every month. Um, in response to that, we have still gone every month, the majority of months from January, even though we started a new fiscal year in July, we've spent the majority of our months justifying the discontinuity of month-to-month -month tracking numbers because of an audit that doesn't allow us to do that. I mean, things get really scrambled at some point, and we can't justify the numbers we have. Okay. Number five, new business. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy. Go ahead on your bank report, please. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure how exciting this is at this point, uh, but at least should be non-contentious. Um, so the bank meeting was on the last one was on Thursday, September 11th, and the guest speaker that night was City Council Member Mitch O'Farrell, who turns out to be the probably one of the few city council members who was an originator of the neighborhood council system. Um, he was never on the board, but he apparently carried the papers, and he's in the Glassall Park neighborhood, which I guess has quite a very group of people living there. 
And um, anyway, he has, they sort of gave an overview of his credentials, which is quite amazing. He's very well spoken. And when he is truly his most interesting, well, his most interested in education and neighborhoods, closing the affordability gap, um, which he, affordable housing is the issue. He was looking at senior housing, low income housing, veteran housing, and permanently housing the homeless in a supportive environment. Um, and he also has a wide interest in animal welfare. So basically he went and explained what he's trying to do and gave some suggestions on hitting the ground running and uh, getting your money's worth out of your elected politicians, which was quite interesting. So he also had an interesting concept on the L.A. River. Um, apparently, neighborhoods own their piece of the river, which means it kind of goes through. So he was looking to possibly put together infrastructure and cleaning up and all of that as the L.A. River went, getting all the people and all the neighborhoods affected together to try to clean it up and maintain it in an intelligent manner. Kind of a approach I had never heard because 